Okay, so so we have three different types of industry. We talked about a constant con constant cost industry already, right? So entry or exit does not affect long long run average total cost, but in the case of an increasing cost industry, it does, right? So if, as we have more entrants, then average total cost will increase. Cost of labor, cost of inputs, whatever it is, it's going to go up because more people need it, right? Decreasing cost industry is a different situation, and that's actually where average total cost will go down as more people enter the market. And this happens in some cases in like, for example, uh, technology industries, right? So if you think about um, like gaming consoles, for example, at the very beginning, gaming consoles will uh, be pretty expensive. Uh, but as you, as you ramp up production, okay, as you ramp up production, like for cell phones even too, right? Then the components that go into those will decrease in price. Okay, the technology and the ability to generate and invest capital in producing cheap microchips, right? Or cheap memory. Those type of things that go into those products are gonna decrease. And so that, that gives us a decreasing cost industry. And so that in real life, that does happen, right? So this is kind of the constant cost, constant cost industry. Okay, so this is the constant, right? In this case, uh, supply, right, is gonna be our horizontal, okay? So the price doesn't really go up or down, so it doesn't necessarily matter where we produce. Average total cost will be what it is. In an increasing cost industry, our average total cost will continue to rise. Okay, so that means our price, in order to increase output, our price has to go up to get this new supply level and operate at that level in the long run. Does that make sense? Revenue has to go up as average total cost goes up. Okay, and, and then we see kind of the game console or the, the tech uh, pricing scheme here in decreasing cost industries, right? Where as you produce more, you actually can lower the price, right? In the long run. The price lowers for those items because the stuff going in them is actually um, decreasing in cost, all the inputs. Even labor possibly, right? As more people are able to and trained to uh, work in a certain industry, okay? But then if you lower the uh, production, then your price is gonna go back up. Okay, and so, and so this, this uh, talks, as we are really focusing in on average total cost or long run cost, right? And having efficiencies in the long run, having, um, having our, uh, long run um, costs go down, right? So we're talking about the, the two main components, right? And I think we've talked about this before in, few, in past chapters, but two, two concepts, productive efficiency, where we're producing in the right way, right? This is the right way, right? Or the, or the cheapest way. And allocative efficiency, which means we're producing the right or the right things, right? We're producing the right products and services. Okay. So where we're producing it most efficiently means that our uh, where the price equals average total cost. That's super efficient. Okay. And then when we produce the right things, then our price equals marginal cost, okay? So when we, when we hit triple equity is, is a term, that means we're having both productive and allocative efficiency. And that's where uh, price equals marginal cost and also 
minimum average total cost, right? In the long run, that's where we end up, okay? And that's where our, these two concepts, consumer surplus and producer surplus are maximized. In other words, when we look at it with, this, uh, with these graphs, we see that uh, when we look at our supply and demand, right? So the consumer surplus and the producer surplus are uh, talked about in these ways, right? So here is equilibrium right here, right? The red that I'm circling. And there's a bunch of consumers on the demand curve right here that would be willing to pay more. They would be willing to pay up in this range. Because it's at equilibrium, then that means the consumers that would be willing to pay more don't have to. And so they actually get to kind of save their money and, and uh, buy other things. So that's consumer surplus. They're more than willing to pay more, but they don't have to. Same thing uh, applies to producers on the supply curve. Okay, this is the, the um, producer or the supply surplus, right? And that's where the producers along these lines are say, hey, we will take a lower price for our product. But because equilibrium is, is here, then they're able to say, you know what? We're getting more than we need or we're willing to accept for our product. So that's bonus profit for us. And so when you hit uh, your triple equilibrium, right? Right back here, triple uh, equality, then you're at a point where producers and suppliers are equally uh, happy, right? With the market situation. A single firm produces there and the market is in equilibrium and is a happy camper. Okay. Uh, hopefully this helps you understand kind of the long run and, and answer some of the questions. If you have any more questions, feel free to send me an email or give me a call. Thanks. Bye.